Hi, everyone. My name is Yemi Penn. I am the founder and CEO of W Squared Coaching, a platform created to empower, inspire, and remind you how much of a powerful creator you are. In this series of Did You Get the Memo? Because I fucking didn't. We explore the untold stories of women and men who are challenging status quo and living life on their terms. I share personal stories and tools that can help you create a life on your terms. Let's do this. Okay. I'm super excited, and I know I say this about all my podcasts, but this one is really, really special, and you're going to find out why soon. I typically would not have conversations about this. Say two years ago, I wouldn't have spoken about things the world had referred to as woo-woo, but as the world is going in the trajectory is we need to start having really bold conversations. My guest here today is Jacqueline Mendez. I call her Jackie. There's a possibility we're going to cackle like some hyenas every now and again (laughs) because we're going to keep shit real. (laughs) And I just need to warn those of you that are listening. But this is a big deal. I think this is my first podcast of 2022. Before I ask Jacqueline, Jackie, to introduce herself, I want to share how I came across Jackie very quickly. I got gifted, I I now believe in synchronicity. I got gifted a meeting with Jackie and Jackie changed my life. I don't say that figuratively. I say that with all its power and being because one of the first things she said to me when I met her was, I don't know why you work for somebody else because you don't like being told what to do. And it was the first time I felt seen. So without any further ado, and we'll find out more, Jackie, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for saying yes, making this happen. <laughs> Please introduce yourself and tell us who you are, what you do. Hello, Yemi. Hello, audience. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So what was the question? Who am I? What am yeah, I doing? Who are you? If I ask you, if someone asks, who are you? What do you do? What would you say? All right. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that I am a catalyst for change. Mm. The minute you step into my world, I know that you are ready to change. Mm. 100%. Oof, you are a catalyst for change. I am. Do you think you draw people in or do people just find you? Most of my work comes from word of mouth, to be honest with you, Yemi. And I do, if I'm out and about, whether I'm at the grocery store or I'm at a party or a dinner, my spirit guides will come in and they'll say that person over there needs to talk to you right now. Okay. So it's no secret that when I do some of my videos, I talk about my guides more openly. And you just said it like it was natural. It's as natural as brushing my teeth every morning. To have these spirit guides. (laughs) Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So when I try to introduce it to other people, I say, um, she's kind of like a numerologist because I'm still trying to get used to words and I'm pretty confident that is not just what you are if you were to give your because we love titles in the world mm. what title would you give yourself um okay let me have a look what would I call myself the first thing catalyst for change so mm. I'm definitely here to pull the rug out from under your feet mm. and I know that when you come to see me you're ready for this mm. okay um what else do I got look I am psychic. I don't particularly like the word psychic because of all the connotations that come along with that word. Yeah. But I am, uh, I'm very connected to my spirit guides. Mm. Okay. I hear them. I see them. Um, Yeah. And then I lost track of where I was going with that. Because you've got a website, you've got a business. I mean, you do a number of things and we're going to speak about some of the other things. Yeah. So numerology is probably the love of my life. I started off with astrology. So what is astrology and what is numerology? So with what I do with astrology, basically the moment that you take that first breath here on earth, Mm. wherever the the planets are lined up around the universe, you take that first breath, that becomes your story in this Mm. lifetime, your life journey. So your chart is a map, your astrology chart, Mm. birth chart is a map of your journey in this particular incarnation. From that, I'm able to see what your challenges are, what your gifts are, where you come from in a past life, what you bring forth with you. 
Okay. So, so yeah, so astrology was my first life. And I started studying astrology when I was 10 years of age. Why was I studying astrology? Because I wanted to understand who my father was. But where did you learn it from? So tell from them the books. beginning of your story. Yeah, but what, what happened? Were you at home? Were you, I mean, no, we have not been taught to understand the stars and the map, the blueprint. What did Jackie go through or experience that had her at 10 years old learning about astrology? So I had a difficult childhood. I had a father that I did not understand. I, I believe he might have been bipolar now. Right. When I look back. Mm. So, you know, you never knew which way, where he was coming from or how he was going to react from one minute to the next. So at the age of 10, you know, obviously I loved my father. I wanted to understand what was going on in this person's body, in his yeah. head. Why was he doing the things that he was doing? Yeah. So it was more about understanding the individual. Mm. And so I started by learning star signs. And then as the years went by, I started grabbing other books. So all of my learning has been self-taught through books and then the information that I received from my spirit guides. From the age of 10? Yeah, it started, you know, I was seeing, I was seeing some creepy stuff when I was a little girl. Did you, did you ever feel different? So you'd go to school and people are talking, I don't know what people were talking about back then, whether it was superheroes or Barbie dolls. Were you, ex were you talking about different things? Oh, Did you yeah. Say I remember being in high school. Then. Yeah. And, you know, you've got this free period. Yeah. It's like, okay, what am I going to do with my free period? I'll go to the library. Do you know, I would sit outside of the library with a pendulum asking questions. My great-grandmother would come in and help me answer questions. And I would have, no word of a lie, a lineup of other kids on a free period waiting for their turn to play, you know, to have their questions answered with the pendulum. I recently ran into a guy that I went to school with that I'd completely forgotten about, see him years later at a school reunion. Mm. And he comes up to me and he says, do you remember doing the pendulum for me outside of the library? And I said, I don't remember, but I'm sure I did. And he said, I'll never forget. You said to me, I was going to make it. I was going to make lots of money. I was going to be very successful because I want you to know that all of that happened. Wow. Yeah. And so how long ago was that or how long in between when you would have done that for him at school and you meet him? 20 years later. So when did you believe? Because here, here's, here's the thing. So when I do some of my work transformation, I find that, that a lot of us have been taught not to believe in the things we cannot see, mm -hmm. meaning that you have to have, you know, we call it psychic you have to have some sort of supernatural power. Mm. When did you realize that it was a superpower? Do you think it's a superpower? <laughs> I think it. we've all got that superpower. I believe that every single one of us has the ability to tune into our intuition and get the answers that we need. Mm. You know, something that's really interesting, Yemi, is because I often say to the people that come and see me, you know, they, they're speaking to me and they say, I think this and I think that. And I say to them, I need you to stop thinking and I need you to start feeling. Mm. Because the spirit world is a feeling world. Mm. It's not a logical thinking world. Okay, so the first thing someone has to do to connect to that side, which we all have, because we are all spiritual beings. Yeah. Right? Having this human experience, basically. Yeah. Um, is stop saying I think and start saying I feel. Wow. Because as you start to feel, you know, you start to feel energy, you start to get those goosebumps. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you look back and little boys are taught not to cry, not mm. to feel, mm. disconnecting them from their intuition. Is that what we've missed? Because you, I don't know, you just said the word feeling and it's just, I've been hearing it over and over again. I went to an event yesterday. Mm. And I was the person in the room that kept on asking, when you do your thing, how do you want people to feel? And I wasn't sure if they got it, but I didn't even realize because that surely is the emotion we're trying to, we're trying to get out. Mm. Why do you think little boys or people have been kind of shut down from feeling? Because it disconnects you from your spirituality and your intuition. If you're not feeling, mm. I mean, I feel energy all the time. If I disconnected from my emotions, I wouldn't feel anything. So I, I, I look back and I think, you know, men and women have all sorts of problems emotionally trying to communicate. Yeah. Right? We are very open emotionally. We need to talk about things. Men are taught that, you know, that's girl stuff. Boys don't cry. Completely disconnects them from their intuition. They feel uncomfortable in that mm -hmm. space. 
Okay, so I want to I want to go back a bit. So when I think of how you and I met, and you do you do readings for people. Mm. So what what I love, and let me it was two thousand and sixteen. I saw you. Two, I think it was two thousand and sixteen. Mm-hmm. Everybody listening, I'll tell you now. I was leading a pretty okay life. I was following the memo, as I call it. I had a job, I had a bit of debt, but between that time and seeing you, which I was gifted because. FYI, I was absolutely paranoid and shit scared of coming to see you. Hence why you brought five bodyguards with you to that <laughs> reading. <laughs> oh my gosh, when I went to see Jackie, I went with my entourage. <laughs> so I like, who are they? Because I was like, I'm not, I'm not being taken away. I'm not having any cat lips to try to take me down. Like, true story. And this, yeah. is, this is why I'm excited about having this chat because our, our friendship has bloomed and we've spoken about the mm-hmm. elephants in the room around mm-hmm. this kind of work. This is the kind of work that people should be able to get, in my opinion, on rebate from healthcare. Yeah. It's an alternative Absolutely. to looking after yourself. Mm-hmm. But in the time I met you to now, and I think of the growth and the expansion, why do you think so many people are scared? Why do you think I came with an entourage that day? What was I scared of? Look, it's 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 interesting. I, I ask people, you know, because sometimes someone gets gifted a, a you know, a reading with me and it might take them an entire year before they come and see me. And, you know, the timing is always perfect. People come when they're meant to come, when they're ready to come. Mm. Uh, I think people are fearful of what might come up for them. I mean, it's many people say to me, men in particular will say, you know, I'm terrified that you're going to say something, this is coming up. Mm. But, you know, the, the great thing about astrology and numerology is, yes, you can see that there is an issue coming up. Perhaps it's a relationship issue. Yeah. So you're forewarned that this is coming up and this is what you need to do to make this work. Oh. But a lot of people are terrified to even go there and just see what might be coming up. But what do we want that? What? I mean, I know there's this balance of I don't want to know what's coming up. Mm. But you said it, it's like a map. That's like saying, oh, I don't want to put on my sat navigation on my maps well, because that's right. I don't want to know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. Like I, so when the more, and I've been to see you pretty much every year, I've recommended people come and speak mm. to you. And even though there is some, because I was, I was slightly skeptic. Yeah. But part of the work I do in trauma is for us to open up our minds and I still don't understand it. When people are telling me your house is in Venus and Mexico <laughs> and where am I? I just add, like literally, and I don't want to make it come quite, I really don't, but I'm, I'm saying what a lot of people potentially think, but are missing out on. Mm. It is phenomenal. Having my numbers kind of explained to me has changed my life. It's made me feel like I'm in the driving seat. Well, you get to really uh, look with numerology. Numerology is fascinating. I look at a number and I see a story Mm. and then I grab a few more numbers and there's a bigger picture playing out for me. Every every number tells a story. Now, numerology is fascinating because one of the things that I try and do is help you remember who you are, why you came here and what you came to get better at. So with the numbers, what's called the life path number, which is derived from the addition of your entire birth date, usually you end up with three numbers. Now, I know that you're a 30 slash three. So the three and the zero, the the three is communication, self-expression. So your soul decided before it incarnated into this incarnation, I need to get better at expressing myself. I need Mm -hmm. to learn to communicate better. So if that's the case, is there a possibility that some things can happen in our life that could take that away? And part of my journey in this life is to find it. So when you say, remember who I am, or when we reincarnate with a mission, Mm. is it that that's plain or do we have to go through a journey to accomplish that mission? What happens? So for example, you being a three, I I know that one of the lessons, so threes suffer with... um, you know, that critical voice, yeah. I'm not good enough, a lot of self-doubt. Yeah. So you chose to come back here. So you may have had a lot of self-doubt with your expressing your voice in the previous life and you realised that and said, okay, I need to come back and this is what I get need to get better at. Mm-hmm. Um, it will come to you. You get to experience the good, the bad and the in-between, everything there is about that number to you become an expert. Mm. Okay, I want to ask, okay, so then what happens next life? But I want to pause for a second. I want to know the real Jacqueline Mendes. What is your story? You've given us a little insight of you being 10 years old. 
what is your story? What has been the makings of you in the journey of your, I'm always interested in the person behind the, or the vessel for this kind of work. Go anywhere you want to. Well, I don't know how far to go back. I did have a very shitty childhood. Mm, shitty. Know. Can you explain what you mean by shitty? Yeah, I mean, I can go into it. I had a father who was extremely dominant. Mm. Um, who, so as an example with the life path numbers and the lessons of whether it comes to you, you have to chase it. So I'm a 314, meaning that communication is, is one of my lessons right, with the number three. The number one is learning to stand on my own two feet, to not be afraid, to take action in whichever direction I want to. Now, I am born into a family, Mm. right, where my father does not allow me to have an opinion or a voice. So the complete opposite of what they came to do. The complete opposite of what I came here to learn to do properly. So right from the start, it was negative, Mm. okay? That did not help me. It took me, I think I was 31 when I finally found my voice and was not afraid to speak up, okay? So a lot of blockages and even just having an opinion, standing up, coming up with an, I was not allowed to do any of that. Children were there, were sitting there quietly, not to speak, and that's how I grew up. Plus, you know, he was very violent, very aggressive. So I got to experience pretty much. I believe I needed to experience all of the stuff that I experienced. And I often say I get I got to experience a little bit of all the bad stuff. Yeah. You know, the sexual abuse, the, the physical abuse, the mental torture. I got a little bit of all of that. Now, without that, yeah. I could not counsel the people to come to see me. But do we, I mean, you, you know the work I'm doing in trauma and, and the first documentary where I asked the question, did I choose my trauma? And, that might be another podcast because listen people we've got a lot to talk about so this is just number one of many Mm. do we have to go through the shit storms is that part of who we are to become do you think I believe unfortunately for some reason humans need to just go through all the dark stuff Mm. to see the light so what would be the best so going back now when you think of all those things you went through and it's funny because you say it you say it with emotion, but also with like acceptance. You accepted oh, yeah, the sexual abuse, the violence. Mm. Were there dark periods for you? Very dark periods, yeah. So how did you how did you work through that? How did you, as I say, clean your trauma, or are you still cleaning it? I'm still cleaning it. I'm still peeling away that the onion skin, and never ends. You know, there's constantly something new that pops up. And um, as painful as it, and I call it giving birth because it literally feels like I'm giving birth every time I have to deal with with some type of trauma. Do we choose our trauma? Um, Maybe not specifically the trauma that came to us, but we need that in order to understand and shift through Mm. the challenges. So what do you experience in your life and possibly continue to experience? Do you think that's helped you help others? Absolutely. How so? Well, I, having experienced all of that, I have natural compassion for yeah. others and understanding of what they've been through. Without, all, without having experienced all of that, it would be impossible for me to understand someone who has had sexual abuse, for example, mm. or uh, you know, an abusive childhood. I can try and understand it. Mm. But you know, I can actually feel that person. I know where you come from. I know where you've been because I've been there. And um, as painful as all of that was, and sometimes I think I could never relive that childhood. There is no way I could relive that childhood again, but I'm so grateful for it. Would you change anything? No, I think if anything, I would love to have been a stronger child and been able to sort of stand up to the adults in my life. You know, all that comes with experience. I look back and I think it would have been great if I just put that person in their place. But as a child, I was terrified. I had no voice. I was just yeah Mm. I don't know why I'm feeling the need to ask this question and let's see Mm. if it makes sense so just imagine younger Jacqueline if she had older Jacqueline with her now golden sense of more experience than knowing what you know about Mm. the world that a lot of us don't know what do you think you could have told her that would have made her speak up more or not this uh, you know it was fear Mm. it was so much fear and it's the fear that held me down you know, I don't. So you and I said we want to talk about fear. We're going to do master classes on it because mm. I think you and I agree it is one fundamental chokehold on humanity. Absolutely, it's the one thing that holds us. us back, stops us in our tracks from evolving. Mm. And you know, this third dimension is all about that. Or 
more of the okay. Yeah. So I'm. I mean, I'm going to go everywhere. Let's jump. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> Let's a song do it. Let's jump around. Let's jump around. Oof. Three dimension. Yeah. What does that mean? All right. So we are living in a third dimension. And, third, and, and, and dim people say, you know, what's this dimension thing? Does dimension mean that we're moving from one place to another? No. All the dimension is is a perception, your conscious perception, where you're at. You know, spirit showed me, um, they gave me a vision many years ago. Mm. And they said to me, look at look at life from an ant's perspective oh. so what they were showing to me was this and this connects to consciousness so they were saying imagine an ant right you're standing there this mm. big tall tower and there's a tiny little ant right next to your foot mm. that ant's consciousness can only expand so far so that ant cannot see me it cannot see this human being standing next to it it just yeah. sees you know the shoe there's a rock there whatever it might be I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but it's it's about shame, changing your consciousness and seeing your perception, seeing things from a different angle. But can can our can our consciousness expand that wide? Because I almost feel we are the ants compared to the rest yeah, of the world. Yeah, absolutely, we are. But can we can our consciousness expand? Yeah, than... absolutely. First thing you need to do is have an open mind, mm. you know, and, and and just allow whatever to come to you without judgment. So if we are in 3D, what is 4D and what's 5D? Because I hear 3D, 5D, and I even use the language. And, mm. and, and this, this, for me, what's been powerful and part of the journey of knowing you is listening to my gut, my intuition. Mm. I feel like I know things now that mm. I cannot explain in the 3D world, i.e. people usually want you to have a peer-reviewed paper and calc, but it's just a feeling I know. Mm. So I say 3D and 5D. Is there 4D? If there isn't, yeah, there is a 4D. Absolutely. What's 4D? We've never spoken about it. <laughs> we just want to kind of glow, <laughs> glide through 4D <laughs> and step into 5D. I'm going to explain to you very simply the way that my spirit guides explained it to me. So I was up in Queensland probably about three years ago. Yeah. Um, getting out of the concrete jungle and just connecting to nature. Mm. And that's when I get the, the best channeling coming through. And um, they said to me, we're sending you into fifth dimension. I had no idea what that meant. Mm. Where was I going somewhere? Physically. Physically, yeah. what was happening? They said to me, when you get back to Sydney, you will understand the difference between 3D and 5D consciousness. Mm. So they explained to me that 3D is um, a place of fear, of inhibition, of feeling stuck, stagnation, mm. um, being mm. separate from everyone else competing the ego right 5d so what i noticed when I, I came back from queensland into sydney one thing i really noticed i noticed the people that were stuck in 3d were stuck in drama mm. okay. oh. there's drama now when you step into 5d you detach from drama so you know you, you might your family might be having a conflict about something and you can come in and you can either like add to the drama and feed that conflict that's very 3D mentality mm. or you can come in with a solution say okay this is what needs to be done here let it go and move on so 5D the other thing is, uh, you know, back in 2013, I remember I was cooking a spaghetti bolognese for the family. So this is how I started to shift mm. for those that want to understand how it happened. Mm. I was cooking a spaghetti bolognese for the family and one of my spirit guides stepped in and he says to me, no more meat. Mm. And I said, then what do you mean no more meat? Are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up on meat, right? What am I going to eat? And they said to me, we don't want you eating any more meat. So I thought, I'm just going to ignore this guy for a few days, see if he goes away. For three days, every time I got on YouTube, some video would pop up about animal cruelty, mm. um, you know, meat this, meat that, hormones, whatever, whatever. Anyway, and I thought, okay, they're really wanting me to do this. So I said to them, okay, I'm going to try this. Mm. In my heart, I honestly thought I will never be able to give up meat. But I'm going to entertain this. I'm going to do it for a few days just to keep my guides happy and see what happens. Yummy. I have not touched meat since 2013. I have not missed it at all. Mm. Now, what happened three weeks after I gave up the meat, yeah. I noticed a massive shift. Oh, wow. My brain all of a sudden woke up. I was alert. 
So I sat down with my guides and I said, what's going on? Why am I suddenly feeling like I can think and I can focus, yeah. you know, all this sort of stuff? And they said to me, the problem is not so much the meat. It is what's been injected into the animals. So the hormones, mm. think about it. And not only that, they said to me, the way that these animals are being slaughtered, right, the fear. So we're talking about energy. Yeah. So the fear that that animal feels when it is being slaughtered. And don't tell me that cows don't know that they're about to be slaughtered. Yeah. Yeah. They know. They do. They yeah. would. They they're would. all lined up and they know exactly what's about to happen to mm. them. There is an energy that happens in the body. The adrenaline is running. The fear is running. That meat is then consumed by you. Mm. And that energy, that fearful energy has been taken in. So but in order to really get and understand that, you've told me that story before and every time I'm like, and I have gone through a period of not eating meat mm. and it is the best mm. I have ever felt and ever looked, even though it wasn't about the looks. But mm. in order to understand what you've just said, you've got to have an appreciation for energy. Yeah, so the thing with ascending, and ascending is raising your frequency and your vibration. When you eat a lot of meat, heavy mm. foods, mm. A lot of junk food, it weighs your energy down. Sluggish, you get tired. You get yeah. completely sluggish, yeah. tired, you can't think straight, you can't focus. Mm. Now, when you start eating raw foods, mm. light foods, you feel a lot lighter, right? You're able to capture a lot more um, from the spiritual world. Yeah. Now, I can certainly, uh, you know, channel information a lot easier now. As a result, I'm not I weighed mean. down. Yeah, absolutely. And even junk food, um, you know, foods that aren't good for you, people really need to look at what they're nourishing. But we're, we're, but we're addicted. Is it fair to say that we are addicted to it? Is there something in some of these foods or do we just need to have stronger willpower? I think we need to have stronger willpower. You know, you look at McDonald's and things like that, they're all addictive foods and they're all terrible for us. Yeah. You eat them and you just feel like you've just guzzled down some petroleum. Well, I, I remember when I used to have a Big Mac, I'd feel like I just swallowed a brick. Why do we keep it going to it? There. It's Why do addictive. We keep... It tastes great. I remember that McDonald's sauce in the Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I have forgotten that sauce. <laughs> and you haven't had meat now since no, then? Well, no. a couple of days after the spaghetti bolognese now. No, because I realised that, you know, I feel much better without it. And I feel that I'm evolving a lot quicker without all that gunk in my body. Oh, okay. So let's take another little detour. Mm. A wonderful, windy road journey. Every now and again, you're talking about your spirit guides. Mm. You refer to he, she, they come in. Yeah. Do we? Do you think we all have spirit guides? 100%. And who are they? A hundred percent. We've got all different types of guides. Mm. So you've got guides, for example, uh, a grandparent that may have passed away in yeah. this lifetime that you've got to meet. Okay. They have. So we have these soul contracts before we actually incarnate with our family, with our friends, with the same, with the generation that we're in. Mm. There are these soul contracts, and we come and we meet up here and we resolve certain things. Um, what was the question? Mm. I, I've already started to wander <laughs> onto my next question. Already. I just want to get everything. Do we all have guides? And you were making reference yes, to the we fact do. that. Yeah. So, yeah, we do. We do have guides. So we have guides that are uh, loved ones that have passed away, that have chosen to, you know, come and be there when you need them. The other mm. thing is, you know, we've all got these guides that are waiting for us to put our hand up and say, hey, I need your help with this. Mm. They are not allowed to interfere in our lives unless we actually ask for help. They're dying to help us. So we just need to ask. We just need to ask. Absolutely. Now, we have different guides for different reasons. Mm. You know, for example, you could have a guide that is helping you with your self-expression, with your communication. Uh, you might have another guide that is helping you with your career, with your relationship. Whatever it is, we've got different guides that come in and out all the time. Mm. You know, um, I remember a few years ago, so I had never seen my spirit guides. I knew they were around, but they'd never shown themselves to me or given me a name. And one day I was there folding the clothes and all of a sudden, I felt two males beside me on either side. Mm. And I went, oh, what's going on here? So I tucked in. On my right side, I had a gentleman that was probably about my height, dressed in brown robes. He looked like a, um, oh, what would I call him? Very spiritual, very practical, very grounded, like a Tibetan, for example. Mm, okay. Yeah. And I said to him, you know, I said, who are you and what's your, your role with me? And he said, I'm the one that keeps you grounded, mm. keeps you steady. I said, all right, nice. And I turned around to the guy on my left. Now, he was like a big, massive white genie. Mm. And he's funny. He's got a great sense of humour. 
and um, and he's the one that brings the, the humor into my life you know mm. sometimes things can get a little bit serious yeah, and he yeah. says and you know don't take life so seriously it's mm. just enjoy the journey it's it's a whole process you know there's no need to be so serious about everything and it's true so hold up Jackie so I, I'm, I'm conscious that I'm leaning into this conversation mm. and I love when you talk and share your story so openly and because I'm working on my expanding my consciousness <laughs> I can hear what you're saying but as I told you, I've seen about five, six spiders in the past mm. couple of weeks, and I've literally shit myself. Mm. You telling me when you had two guys come next to you, you are not bricking it a hundred percent. Yeah, but there's a on. thing with God. Okay, so there's a thing. Okay, yeah. As a child, now this is very interesting because as a child, the higher powers, mm. right, be good or bad, right? Mm. They know who you are before you come here. Okay. Now, as a child, I know that I came with a lot of light and a very specific purpose in this lifetime, which was to change people's lives and get them moving and, and evolving very quickly, mm. shifting out of that 3D. Yeah. Um, what, and so you're asking me the fear. I've had, I've had yeah. spirits. So as a child, I was tormented at night by negative Beings. so that's the fear a lot of us have that's the yeah, movies we watch like ghost when yeah. this you know and so there are some that, nasty entities so, out there so then what do you say to people who because that's possibly where the blockage is i mean when my dad passed i remember having conversations with him dad i love you mm. but don't come visit me at night because i'm going to be scared and i'm possibly blocking well, there's a, there, really there is a fear of the unknown and of course you know when if there's a spirit there you're not necessarily going to physically see this thing but you sense that something's there and if you don't know where is it can be quite scary so how do we get over that how do what's the best way to get over it? especially as you said you had some entities that scared you I have had entities that have been extreme it's like having the devil in front of you so when you feel energy you feel god energy and you feel devilish energy yeah. right um you just feel it straight away you feel that this thing that's right here is extremely negative I mean I had this reptilian mm. thing that appeared in my room a couple of years ago and that was one hell of a scary creature so I remember you telling me that story mm. and there were a couple of nights I couldn't sleep <laughs> I'm sorry you <laughs> <hear> me? <laughs> it's okay because but I think what it did for me is it it kind of made me more aware of the high vibrating energy I want around mm. me. And I think it reminds me, because look, for us to assume that life is always going to be hunky dory, there's always going to be something dark. I mean, we have we find darkness in ourselves, in our friends, um, in our family. So we've got to be able to find the light. And that's what I love about your definition of 3D and 5D. Mm. I think sometimes we think it's got to be like this game where, I don't know, it's a holographic. You're just saying no, 5D is mm. absent of fear. It, yeah, it's changing your perception, basically. You know, mm. And the other thing is in order to start ascending right into 5D or stepping into 5D, if you yeah. like, yeah. you know, Spirit showed it to me like they put a ladder in front of me and they said, we want you to climb up this ladder. So it's like you're reaching up into heaven, right? Yeah. But they said to me, you cannot climb this ladder till you let go of all the baggage that you're carrying with you. So that yeah. is very important. We need to like, we need to dig deep. We need mm. to like look within ourselves. We need to, we literally need to throw ourselves into the fear that we feel, whatever that might be. It's scary. Yeah. But you know what? I have thrown myself into those fearful mo uh, spaces that within me. And at the end of the day, you know, my mind has created this enormous fear that was yeah. nothing compared yeah. to what I actually experienced when I faced my own fear. So the mind, you know, disconnecting from the mind is very, very important and connecting to the heart, mm. you know, because the truth, the, the heart is the compass that guides us. The truth is always there. And it's about just being able to listen to that that space there. But you need to disconnect the head. I think this is why you and I need to work together is how can we guide people to do that i mean i i do not coaching i create programs for a university in sydney mm -hmm. and a group of women who are studying engineering and it and they're about to go meet a mentor who's going to help them with their career mm -hmm. they are so unaware of themselves and i say this with love because i was there as well but they say yeah me i don't know how to act when i get in front of them should i look them in the eye should i hold their hand that's where we are at this stage in humanity mm. because we've been blocked from just even showing up as ourselves so when you say we need to disconnect and stay my mind says 
a lot of people need some guidance on that. So how can we break it down? And I don't know if anything has come to mind now. You know, yeah, the, the word that comes to me is authenticity. Yeah, to step into your authentic self. Remember who you are mm -hmm. and step into that person. You know, numerology is fascinating in that regard because it gives you an understanding. And as I'm giving you the numbers and, and explaining to you, you know, Let's let's talk about number two. So number two is a number that is all about relationships and mm. setting boundaries with others. Now I get a lot of people with twos that come and see me, and these are people that really struggle saying no to others. Yeah. You know, and the minute I say that, oh wow, yeah, definitely I can't say no to people. Mm. You know, and and just by talking about it, it starts to help them remember, you know, and understand who they are, what they, where they come from, and what they're here to learn. Mm. Um, so, yeah, numerology is fascinating because it does. It, it starts to uncover and peel the layers. We start to remember, okay, yes, this is who I am. Um, if everyone had their numbers done, I how believe, would the world be different? Listen, I believe that numerology should be taught in primary school. Really? That every child should understand their numbers. You know, I've come here to be to get better at this. Now, once I fix that, that becomes my gift to the world. Oh, yes. You know, can so I your challenge is there and your gift is standing right next to it. So just by understanding, oh, if you can stop doing this and turn it around to this, you're there. That's it. It's as simple mm -hmm. as that. Why do we, why would we not take, for me, this is it with numerology and any other modality that's out there, but the reason why numerology, you know, I, it's, a, it's a beautiful birthday tree. I mean, mm -hmm. not that I have to wait for my birthday, but every year it just feels really good to see what I am capable of doing. Yeah, what the year holds in yeah. store, what the new challenge yes, is. Yes, yes. Can I do this? Yes. Will I do this? Correct. Yeah. I, I mean, why wouldn't we take that as an Absolutely. option? Okay, so let me think of the person that says, this is BS. This is placebo. This is what, whatever they want to call it. <laughs> Where does that come from, do you think? And can I you think it's a that? lack of understanding. You know, I remember when I was much younger and, and a lot less confident within myself because obviously I didn't have the, the experience that I have now and I often would get um I don't know if the word is attacked but often corporate businessmen would say to me oh what a load of nonsense and I got mm. to the point where I stepped up and I said okay well what do you know about astrology or numerology mm. and there'd be this blank look they literally knew nothing about it mm. you know so these are people that are, are just you know I don't believe in this because I heard whatever, but you've never actually like stopped and had a look at it, experienced it. You can't judge something unless you've actually been there agreed. and done it, right? Agreed, agreed. So that I find there's a lot of fear with it. There's a lot of preconceived ideas about all of this. Yes. You know what, for, for me, I think when I got gifted this, because first I was like, mm -mm, I ain't spending my money on that. I was like, <laughs> I was fully on like that. And then I got gifted this. And usually when you get gifted something, even though if you do it yourself, you begin to listen to your own intuition. Mm. It's usually because your guides are saying, we've got some help for you. Mm. And this is through Jackie. This is through this. But when I, when I got gifted that, and I've now lost my point as well, it was... It was, it was a case of I felt like I was breaking every cultural thing I had oh, been taught. Yeah. So culturally, yeah, just like it, what was it? I had an ex-partner that called it voodoo, bandulu, <laughs> this, that. And it just, and it was, it's what the religious institution has done, not blaming anybody or any particular religion. Mm. But for me, anything that strips you of trying anything you just want to be weary of it. Don't get Absolutely. me wrong, they can give you guidance, but yeah. it was fear. It was fear. And I remember coming in, I remember walking through your door and doing the crucifix sign, please God, take control. And that was all I needed to say, because whether you believe in God, Mary, Allah, whoever it is you believe in, you got to believe they've got your back. So for me, I was like, yeah, let me hear this. And I, I know that whatever and whoever I believe in is part of it. So it was just quite interesting that I had I had the same stigma against something yeah. I didn't know anything about. And there's really nothing scary. You know, I'll say to people at the end of it, so, you know, was that as scary as you were expecting <laughs> it to be? And they're like, no, that was amazing. <laughs> like, you really didn't tell me. And the great thing about what I do is that, I'm not really telling you anything that you deep down don't okay. do not Correct. already know. Correct. I am reminding you. Yeah. 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 Um, so everything I say to you, you're aware of this already. 
at some level. So I, so I hear my, my lovely man speech, he comes into my mind and even though he doesn't think like this anymore, mm. he would say something like, but why do I need to be told what I already know? Well, sometimes we need to be reminded. Absolutely. Because we have forgotten. A hundred percent. Yeah. Literally every time I have a conversation with you or somebody in the same field, or now that I'm tapping into my own psychic abilities, mm. my own intuition, I do forget. And of course I forget because I've got all these fucking bills I've got to pay. I've got life. I'm having Absolutely. to deal with the pandemic and parenthood. And like, yeah. And talking about intuition, yeah, I mean, now mm. that you brought it up, I think it would be fascinating to explain to people what intuition yes. is and how to use it. Tell us. Yeah. Okay, so intuition mm. comes from the heart. It's our soul. Mm. Okay, so as I get people that come with me to me and they're like, you know, I've got to make a decision about some area of my life and I cannot decide because we're always trying to make the right decision. Yeah. We don't want to stuff it up. Yeah. Um, and it's actually quite easy, you know. So what you need to do when you need to make a decision, you need to sit with yourself quietly, light a white candle if you can, mm. call in your guides. Even if you don't know who your guides are or what they look like or what their names are, just call your guides in. I'm calling in my higher self, mm. my over soul, mm. okay, those that want the best for me, mm. okay, and always protect yourself, you know, ask for protection. Then you've got, two, you've got a situation, right? Let's say you're making a career change yeah now you studied let's say accounting mm. okay and you studied accounting not necessarily because it was you know the dream job but it was a job that was going to pay the bills and this yeah. is what your parents hammered into you mm. become a lawyer a dentist a doctor the usual right but deep down you've always wanted to play the guitar or be a singer mm. okay now you've come to a point in your life where there is a choice for you to make mm. Right now, you need to sit with yourself. You need to cut your head off first of all. You've got to chop that head off, right? <laughs> chop that <it> off. <laughs> okay. Now I need you to sit with your heart, okay? Because the heart is the compass that guides us. Mm. Right. So what happens is you say to your heart, you ask your heart, "Do you want to be a singer? Do you mm. want to play in a band?" Mm. Now, if your heart does somersaults and raises to the heavens, that is a yes. Mm. If it falls to the ground and just swaps, it's a no. So when you ask your heart, would you like to be a singer? And it's jumping for joy, that's a yes. And when you go, okay, what about being an accountant? Ooh, <laughs> I definitely don't want to do that. But the thing is, right, so you've got to trust that first feeling that you get the first feeling because the minute that you take that into your head, mm -hmm. the head wants to analyse it. It wants to say to you, yeah, but you know what, Yemi? What if you don't make money being a singer? Mm -hmm. You know, you're definitely going to make money being an accountant. So the head just brings in fear. It stops us in our tracks from following our true desire, which is the heart. We have to have faith and we have to have trust. We are being looked after constantly by our guides, mm. right? So all we need to do is uh, just check in with your heart. How is it feeling? Is it jumping with joy or yeah. is it flat? I, love, I mean, look, listen up. If you're listening, please share this because I think just what you shared there is gold indecision is the most crippling yeah. thing for anybody progressing Absolutely. and if you can do that even though it sounds brutal but it's necessary is take the head off just get the head out of the conversation mm. and see hear feel Connect what your, your heart soul. does yeah your soul knows exactly what it's supposed to be doing but then the head steps in and it's got all these opinions and mm. And then we become confused and then we don't know what to do. The same applies for when you meet someone. You know, yeah. there are people that can't decipher uh, between good and bad. Yeah. Right? People. yeah. And so you, you meet someone for the first time and check in, what am I feeling? Now, I'm not talking about, you know, you're judging that person because of the way they're speaking or how they look or the way they dress. It's an energetic feeling. Mm. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll meet someone and you immediately have this feeling of, I feel like I've known this person my entire yes, life. Yes. You know, and I am so comfortable. That's your your intuition saying to you, you can trust this person, you can open up to them, it is safe. Mm. Now you might meet another person in a different situation and they are acting out, everything is perfectly, they're playing their part, fine. 
friend me was like, but you've got this uneasy feeling in your belly, mm. like something's not right, but they've done absolutely nothing. Most people will question themselves yeah. and they'll go, why am I feeling Correct. like this? Yeah, and then they become quite confused and they don't know what's, what's right or wrong. But the minute you get an uneasy feeling, that is your heart saying to you, do not trust this person. You don't need to say anything to them, mm. but you are not going to divulge your deep dark secrets to this individual because they are going to use that against you at some point. Jackie, is it fair to say that the more you practice using your intuition, the better you get? 100%. Because even as you're saying this, I found a little bit of anxiety, but what if I get it wrong? What if I get it wrong? And that's me going back into and my head again. most people feel that way. Yeah. Most people feel that way. You have to have faith and trust. Yeah. You know, it's the same like, you know, we were talking about someone's chart this morning and yeah. I can see that this person has an opportunity this year mm. through their astrology chart to get out of a job situation that is not serving them anymore. Yeah. And I know that the minute this person has the courage to listen to their heart and the heart saying, you know what, mm. I am done and dusted with this job. I really am not happy here, mm. right? But this person is in fear because it's like, well, you know, if I leave, I've known this my whole life. It's paying my bills my whole life. Yeah. What am I going to do? I don't know what's around the corner if I let go of this. But this is a test for this particular individual. And I can see that the minute, so the test is have enough faith to follow your heart and yeah. let go of this situation that you're not happy with. Because the minute you do that, I can see that so many doors will open up. Mm. But those doors are not going to open up for you until you have the courage to let go of that and just have faith and trust. This is so good. It is so simple. But the head comes in and just... This is so good. Down upside down. But this, this was literally what happened. It wasn't exactly word for word with me. But literally, I saw you, I want to say the December of 20. No, it was 2015. Mm -hmm. January 2016, I quit my job. Shit wow, myself. I did not waste any time. I didn't. Any. But I've <laughs> never, I've never, and I'm just, and I'm still on that trajectory yeah. and set up my own consultancy in that same January and won my first contract of over $100,000 in March. It's like that you stepped out of where exactly, you weren't meant to be. Every door I Exactly. Up for you. Like I can't, now you and I didn't, you know, we spoke about what we wanted to talk about and I love how beautifully it's crafted into mm. this. And I'm, I'm having goosebumps. I'm getting really excited. I, I know there's only one of you. I mean, we, so we're, we need to come back and I want us to talk about fear. We're going to do another podcast, yeah. either podcast or masterclass. I don't know. I put the details in the show. It's very important. Right it now, is. Yeah, you know, it I've got is. a message last month. I think I spoke to you about the kidneys. Oh, yes. Releasing yes. fear. So January specifically was a month for people to release fear. Mm, uh, and, yeah. and, and we hold fear in our kidneys. So, you know, anyone out there that's been having any pain in their lower back or mid back mm. is connected to holding on to fear. I feel the need, if you can, and I know you mentioned the twos. Is there anything, oh, there's so many things I want to say before we wrap up. Is there anything you could share with regards to the year, the year 2022? Because you mentioned Absolutely. Look at all the twos. Oh, two, no. two, 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 two. We're still in February. Two. Absolutely. So we've got a two, we've got a zero, and we've got a double two. Mm. So this is the universal year. When you add those numbers up, we end up with a six. What the twos are asking us to, um, to integrate this mm. specific year the two is all about having better relationships with each other the two is a number that comes um incarnates here it is a number that is highly intuitive right. very it's very much connected to your soul and your heart mm. so people born with the two are extremely intuitive now whether they they trust their intuition or not is another story and that could be their learning but the two is about learning to say no without feeling guilty. That is the number one thing. Recognising the people in your life too is about equal give and take. Mm. The negative two is somebody who does not recognise um, their own personal needs. They put everybody first mm. and themselves last. Okay, they are unable to say no to people. They feel guilty. I've got to come up with some excuse. Right. What people will recognise under all this two energy is they will recognise those individuals that, I call them vampires, the ones that suck your yeah. energy. There's no give and take. Mm. Okay, whether they're friends, family members, community, it doesn't matter. People are going to recognise 
the people that are there just to suck them dry. So what can they do to protect themselves? Set from boundaries, them? first right. of all. Okay. So, you know, uh, deciphering the limits of your responsibility to others and stepping up and actually speaking because as you speak, mm. you teach others. You know, sometimes people don't recognise that they're doing this, yeah. they're sucking the life out of you. So you need to sit down and say, you know, I've, I've got this responsibility but that is your responsibility you need to take care of that side of things mm. that's your stuff but twos often feel like you know I'm here to fix the world I have to take everything on and I do not like conflict so I'm just going to do it all but they end up very resentful very angry because they feel like everyone's just walked all over me no one's fault but your own because you are unable to just step up and say this and I've had enough and mm. I'm setting my boundaries but this enough. year you know the twos are about that it's about setting boundaries with people set healthy boundaries where there is equal give and take, mm. okay, at every level. Um, you know, a simple one could be I'm the only female in my home, I'm surrounded by men, and for some reason they think that because I'm the woman, I'm the one that cooks and cleans and does everything. Mm. So that's one area where I've had to pull them up. Yeah. You know, we need a balance here. Things are really out of whack. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, and you sometimes have to remove yourself. So that's your boundary Absolutely. setting so that they can figure and it I out. And I do that. I do leave. It's like, okay, I'm leaving you guys down there and I'm going up the coast for a week. Yeah. Wonderful. Because I need that time for myself. So it's about honoring your soul and what you need for yourself. It's very, very important. Um, the three twos add up to a six. Now, the six is about creating peace and harmony. Mm. Um, with everyone around you. This is about support. The twos are about supporting one another. It's about creating communities of like-minded people where we support, where we cooperate with one another. We are helping each other build something. Now, it, it turns into a six, and the six is about peace, love, harmony, understanding, resolution to problems. So does that mean there's hope for 2022? I know we've got There's always this hope, my darling, always. Mm -hmm. Always. The sun always shines again. Mm. Absolutely. So this year is about, the, with the six, and I was talking about drama and being in 3D and stuck yeah. in drama. Some people love being stuck yeah. in drama. It's their natural disposition. To Absolutely. Be there. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I don't know any better, but this year it's about, okay, there is drama happening here. What solution or resolution can I bring to the yes. table? That's who we want to be. That's the message. Absolutely. Can you be the person who comes with the resolution and solution? without feeling the need to act because what other people do is they like to create the drama and so that they can be the solution the yeah we don't need that we need more 5d is about stepping out of the drama detaching from the drama mm. so when i talk about detaching you know we'll go to number threes because threes are all about self-expression and mm. communicating and a lot of them struggle getting there you know just standing up for themselves yeah. or whatever it might be um where was I going? Lost the plot. It's okay. Well, you went from number twos to threes. Is that because that's the next graduation? The next. That, well, yeah, that's the next phase. Um, but I was going to say something specific, and I completely lost it. It's okay. Maybe it wasn't meant what, to be coming out. Something? I can't remember. Uh, it we're was no. It, yeah, we were. Six. Yeah, we were talking about people not being the ones who create the drama. So that they can figure out the solution and i think you're gonna that's go. right so with the number three i often say to people with the three mm. you know you need to deal with conflict immediately so the three is about learning to deal with conflict yeah and lots of threes will either you know if someone upsets them or hurts their feelings they will completely shut down and suppress their voice and and say absolutely nothing and yeah. give their power away uh, there are other threes that shout and scream and you know regret what they say later mm. and that all depends on who you're you're talking to but where I, what I was getting to is I often say when you know don't leave for tomorrow what you can deal with today because yeah. we often say you know I'll I'll confront the situation with this person tomorrow mm. and, and sort out this conflict but then tomorrow comes and, and it's kind of like swept under the carpet yeah. and, and we don't want to deal with it so when when we're shifting into 5d we want to deal with things immediately the yeah. best way that we possibly can yeah, no. Um, so it's about, okay, I want to bring the solution to the table. I do not want to keep feeding the drama. Yeah. So you bring the solution to the table, put it out there, and then we move on and we let go. We detach from it. We don't carry it with us for the rest of the day. Mm. This is 5D. We resolve immediately and we move on. There's so much good stuff. Yo, Jackie, we're going we're gonna to wrap up now because I want those who have listened to absorb this, let it sit mm. with them. And I'm going to ask people wherever we post this, what has come up for you? Mm -hmm. What questions do you have? Mm -hmm. What do you want to know more of? So before we wrap up, 
if there was a message you could share with the world, what would it be? Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> There's so many messages. I know you're looking in your whole shopping bag. What should I share? <laughs> I think, look, I think probably the most important message that I would want to give to the universe right now is, is the ability to learn to connect to your intuition, to trust your intuition, because that is guiding you on a daily basis. Mm. Have faith and trust. Do not be afraid. You're being looked after. We're all being looked after. This is, we're on stage here. We're on a journey. Our soul lives forever. We never die. Okay, we're here having this amazing experience. Um, go out and live life to the fullest. Go and create. Mm. We have come here to create, to experience, to discover hidden talents. Oh. Yet most of us are stuck in jobs that we hate, paying bills that we don't want to pay stuck in fear, afraid to step out of this comfort zone that we hate anyway. What on earth have you got to lose? <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> Be You're a wild just... child. Oh, my God. Look at my hair. It's mad. <laughs> And I, I love wish it. people could see <laughs> your facial expression because you get really passionate. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, yeah. It's, it's undeniably part of your purpose and yeah. what you're here to do. My purpose is to show people that um, there is no need to be in fear. We live forever. We are in this, you know, we're in this physical body that's like a car that you're driving around on earth. And without the car, your, your soul cannot yeah. function here. Yes. Mm, you know, oh, but, so you know, you don't want to. I often say to people, like, this is important because I often get a lot of people that are so worried about what everybody else thinks. Yeah. You know, and this is probably the one thing that comes up the most in my readings that people are worried about what everybody else is thinking and mm. I say to them you know everybody's got an opinion yeah absolutely everyone has an opinion about something whether it's good or bad now you come here so when you pass away and you have a review of your life and we can talk about this further life after death mm. and so forth on another podcast but you yourself decide I need to come back and I need to get better at this this yes. and this yes then you're born into this life and you have parents with conditioning and, and certain belief systems um you know, I, I often come across clients who say to me, you know, I studied law, never did it, but I did it to keep my parents happy. And I'm thinking, gosh, you just spent six to eight years at university doing something that you did not want to do and you knew you were never going to do it. Right. But it kept your, your, your family happy. Now, there's one thing I know for certain that you leave this, you come here on your own and you leave it on your own and there is only one person that you need to answer at the end of the day and that is to yourself it's mm. not your parents mm. so you know what do what you need to do do not worry about what anyone else thinks oh okay okay have um, belief and confidence in yourself and just go and do it go um, and create on that, you, know, <laughs> you have given everyone the permission oh my gosh they, yeah that everyone they needed, has permission that they needed to hear and I'm I, I think if I can be mad enough I'm going to try and get this out this weekend and speaking of permission one thing that comes up in readings a lot mm. is I get people you know I'll say something and then I see a massive smile on their face and it's like my god I feel like you've given me permission to yeah. do what I've always wanted to do yeah and it's also because you've got that gift you've got that gift of you're the messenger you're you're like a wonderful messenger mm. and that's what you've gifted me definitely my family loved ones you are the messenger who isn't necessarily trying to fix people. You're just showing them that, hey, you see that map that you were given? There's 30, always different paths years, you can correct. take, but yeah. if you take this one, oh, yeah. your world's going to yeah. blow out more proportion. Yeah. So if people wanted to have a reading with you, what would be the best way? Do they? I mean, I'm going to put your website and show you. Yeah, look, the best there. way would be to just jump on my website, fill out a form, see what type of service you want. If you're not sure what service you want, Send me a message. Okay. We can chat. See where you're at, what you need. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm here to wake you up. I'm here to get you where you're meant to be. There is no time to be wasted anymore. Oh. Everything is shifting so quickly. Mm -hmm. Manifestation is happening immediately right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take years to manifest what you want anymore. It takes. It can take minutes to manifest what you want. Oh, okay. All right. There are so many things that have come up in my mind. I'm going to wrap up mm. and say thank you to the listeners for listening, for leaning in. And thank you so much, oh, Jackie. It's my pleasure. Thank it's you. It's been an absolute joy, even though we talk about this pretty much every week. Yeah. It's like so juicy to hear mm. it again. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.
you've been listening to Did You Get The Memo? Because I fucking didn't. As always, thank you for listening. And now it's time to level up.